Hey guys, as always, good you do. Welcome to the Appalachia Bees. Let's talk about ammo. How do we get in this place and what is coming next? And when is nature going to heal itself? It's been a hot minute since we've had the ammo conversation. I've now done my homework. By the end of today's video, you'll know what's going on and well, you'll know what I know. Plus, we also have some great folks in this audience that, that work in the ammo industry and they may pop up and talk in the comment section as well. So it's time to have this one. I think we need to talk a little bit about it because it's super, super important. Buckle up, here we go. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by KAK Industry. They sell everything but the lower, plus all the tools you'll need for your next build. Huge selection, and they're the exclusive distributor for the Shockwave Blade Pistol Stabilizer, high volume precision machine shop, and they make a half a million components every month. And good news, you can get 10% off your next order with code Johnny10 when you head over to kakindustry. You know what? Big thank you to the folks at KAK Industry. A lot of stuff over there. A lot of stuff over there. And a big thank you to each of y'all for every thumbs up. Appreciate y'all. Thank you to everybody that hits thumbs up before the music even stops. And to the 12 of y'all that hit thumbs down on every video. Appreciate y'all as well. Thank you for engaging. Your opinion is given all the attention it deserves. Yeah, that's fun. Thumbs down are a little bit of fun, a little bit of fun. All right, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about, about ammo. And let me go through a couple things first and we'll talk about it, but if you just want the short answer, when is it coming back, nobody knows. I mean, that's the short version. If that's all you want today, yeah, nobody knows. Nobody knows. But there are some things that went into this. So I want to explore a little bit about how we got to the place and then tell you some, some, some things where I think, I think of nature is healing itself a little bit Three things, just caveats right up front. One, people need ammo. There's no way around it. People get upset at me because I burn so much. I test for pewpewtactical.com. I burn a lot. It's the way it is. And I've been, I'm, I'm stocked way up and I have been. I've, I've had ups and downs, but I've stayed on top of it. And right now I'm using mostly Russian stuff. And steel cased is the way it is. Two, don't be that guy. So many people, and they'll, they, you may already have started in the comment section. Well, no one should be a hoarder. We're in this situation because of hoarders. Somebody on Reddit today said nobody should own that much. There was a certain amount they were talking about. I think it was 35,000 rounds. And somebody said no bleeping way that anyone should own that much. Well, are you into freedom or not? Because when you say that nobody should own whatever it is, whatever you think is a lot, or nobody should scalp, nobody should, you're not into free market. It's amazing to me how few people, or how often, I should say it this way, how often I see in the two-way community people that are not pro-capitalist or not free market. Yeah, own whatever you want. I'm about being free. Buy whatever you want to buy. Don't be that guy. It's not up to you to determine what your neighbor owns. Are you into freedom or not? Well, that's not fair. Nobody said life was fair. And number three is a lot of guys are just like, all those companies should just increase output. Remember, and some of y'all know this, some of y'all are into in industrial stuff. It is a major commitment to open up new facilities and buy all the equipment and increase output. Most are running 24 hours a day, running at like 110% capacity. And, and they're, they're already doing that. And why it's really risky to open up a new facility, buy all that stuff for a market that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and people will lose their rear ends. So that, that's some, some, some situations I think right now that are, that are really kind of tough that we need to pay attention to. People are hungry for ammo, they need it. Don't be that guy, that's my opinion, don't be that guy. I, I hear it so often, our, every ammo conversation, well, there's, it's the scalper's fault. I don't like scalpers any more than y'all do, but I don't want to control what another American owns. And then also increasing output is not, is not realistic. Now, good news is, and y'all saw that back in, back in December is, is the head of federal ammo came out and just shared a little bit about the reality of what he's dealing with. And they are cranking out the output. And now nine months later, I think, I think we see, are seeing some good things. All right. How did this happen? What did we get to this point? Well, one, the supply chain, supply chain right now is messed up bad. It's very hard to get brass. It's expensive. It's hard to get copper. I think lead, I think lead is a little bit easier, but there's a lot of the things that go into this that are really, really difficult. Remember, half the country is shut down. Uh, people are being paid to stay home, especially there's a lot of folks that are in the uh, industry that are working Americans that they'll make more staying home. And so there's staffing issues, there's supply issues. It's a mess. I think most of y'all know that too. Now we are slowly right now recovering from last 2020 
March, April, May, and most of June. That's when it got bad. When we <coughs> went into that situation, people panicked and they started buying like crazy. It's what we do as Americans. When things start going south, we start getting ready. And that's, that's just what we do. Three, because of the, <coughs> we had a bunch of people buy new ones, a whole lot of people. And that was very simply, when there's, again, there's a panic, people start buying. We have a lot of brand new ones, especially in uh, the minorities, uh, new gun owners and people of color went really, really high for major importing problems. I'll put the picture up right here of those container ships. And that was off the coast of California. That's just one picture. But there were months and months and months and months and months of ships just sitting out there floating off the coast of our ports, especially the ones that are coming in from China and it's not good. Now at this point you can type away, well, we shouldn't rely on China. This is just where we are at. So major importing problem, y'all know that one. And then number five, we have a president that literally said he's coming after him in writing and verbally. He's talking about a gun czar. I am not, you're hearing it here in this video for the first time, convinced that David Chipman is not going to be the gun czar. We'll see, we'll see, but there are whispers of that. And then because of that president, even more new gun owners. Last year alone, 3.5 million new gun owners. By some, there's different numbers out there, but it's in the millions, and all of them need more stuff. They need, they need ammo. They don't just need one box of 50 that they get free with their shield. So that is some factors that went into this, and things have been really, really bad. All right, let's get fast forward to today. Where are we at? All right, here's some good news if you don't know this. A lot of y'all don't shoot steel-cased ammo, but right now there's a lot of good coming in from Eastern Europe, and that is one of the best things we're seeing right now. I have been buying a ton of steel-cased ammo. I run steel-cased ammo. I don't run it very often in my number one, and my, my number one, my big CMMG, the gold one that y'all have seen, or the, it's copper colored. Midnight bronze, but my bronze CMMG, I, I've run a lot of steel through it, but generally I don't. CMMG says 100%, don't worry, shoot whatever you want. Me personally, I just, I always hear, don't run, don't run steel. But, so usually I don't, but I still, I practice a lot with steel. I would say in the last year, 99 rounds out of 100 have been steel cased in 5.56 and in 9 millimeter. Now in other ones, like Creedmoor, it's been all brass. Can you even get steel case cream? I don't think so. So the Russian stuff, really, really good too. You're not gonna like this, be patient. I'm being patient as well. I need to get some more Russian stuff, but be patient. I think, I think we all need to look, this channel always goes 30,000 view, 30,000 foot view. Look at the ups and downs. We survived Bill Clinton. We survived all of that nonsense, big time nonsense with those bands. And we also survived a lot of up and downs, ups and downs during Obama's situation. And we'll get through this. I think we will. So just be patient. And then finally, let me say this. When things open up, and I, th I think it will, I think it will. I really want to encourage you, because we, we, you know, I open with we don't know when it's coming back, but I really want to encourage you to don't be caught with your pants down again. I was not caught but I wish I was a, about 30% better, better prepared. I'm fine. Um, I think next time I want to be a, be much, much in a much, much better situation. So you're just going to hoard it all to yourself. Yeah. You give me nine millimeter at about, about $7 a box. I'm going to hoard it up. Brass. Give me some blazer brass. <laughs> So that's where I'm at. All right, that's a lot. Uh, we, I think it's good to have this conversation to go through it. I also want to hear what y'all have to say because, again, we got some great people in the comment section. That's where I'm at. We don't know when it's coming back, but I do think we're in recovery. Look at the Eastern, Eastern European stuff that's coming in and be patient and next time stock up even more. See y'all tomorrow. Bye.